Salamat from Brunei. So today we are in Syria, one of the cities here in Brunei after Bandar Siri, Bagwan and Kuala Belait. It's very close to Kuala Belait. Yeah, so in fact they call it as the twin city, Kuala Belait and Syria are right next to each other. And we came here because after exploring Kuala Belait, we thought this one might also have something interesting to do. This is an oil extraction machine and it's fondly called as an nodding dog. Going up and down, and it pulls out oil from almost one kilometer down into the earth. It's pretty cool. And in just a few meters, we found these creatures. Oh, why go that side when I. Right. <laughs> Hello, buddy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shishira, your cousins are all there. Yeah, my relatives actually from my husband's side. <laughs> we learned that this was the favorite spot for all the crocodiles to hang out. Can you see that on the left side there's a small track that is for cyclists. How cool is that? Hi. the Syria Museum where we are getting to learn about how the oil and gas industry is flourishing here, the science behind all of this and it's pretty incredible because it's maintained entirely by Shell. And we have a countdown! Three, 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 two, kilometers of pipelines, gas reservoirs and offshore environments. By analyzing scientific data from surveys conducted by geologists and other scientists, experts can determine the size, shape and depth of the undersea reservoirs and the best drilling sites. A lot of expertise is needed to make sure every offshore well is safe, cost-effective and environmentally friendly. Today's advanced technology is making deep water drilling safer and better than ever. Offshore rigs are assembled in the water before they begin drilling. <laughs> now Neet is trying to do the same thing. Okay, now he's just playing with it. Oh, they have a small version of the nodding donkey as well. This section of the lab showed us about all the marine life and the corals found in the water below the drilling platforms. Cycling and generating electricity. Mad scientist working in the dungeons. <laughs> so, this museum is actually very interesting because you get to learn about the different kinds of extraction of oil and what kind of processes it goes through. We also learned that one of the earliest oil extraction sites in Brunei was actually built right here in Syria and uh, even today it produces about 28,000 barrels of oil which is a fair bit of money. And this was really interesting because all the 
stuff that they have portrayed here is all interactive basis so you interact with that machine or it's something like a game and then you learn something from yeah. it yeah and if you've got kids this is like the best yeah. place where you can bring them and get them to learn about oil and the the whole concept of you know this energy and everything as we were moving in the car we saw many nodding donkeys so yeah. in fact this museum helped us understand what it actually did and why is it those are basically way? big uh, oil extraction machines that keep pumping out oil from almost a kilometer underground yeah. and the ones in the sea are like even more crazy they're out there so many kilometers out in the sea floating on 60 meters depth of water and then they drill deep holes into the earth just to pull out oil there's also an aquarium inside where they have um basically kept a lot of the fishes corals and even plants that grow in this part of the world uh, borneo as you know is very very uh, blessed with a uh, lot of wildlife yeah. and the underwater life here in brunei is supposed to be one of the best in the region so here they actually have live corals a bunch of different animals and fishes that live underwater and you can just see it right there yeah i like spending my one hour mm. here i learned so much and yeah. also i played a quiz and i and now need competed Which animal is the most efficient and effective? Are you losing now, Meet? So I am number three, and now Meet is number two, and the winner is. It Me. feels like it feels like our CA final exam again. And as you can see on the screen, you can see who won. Actually, she played the game twice, so you can see why she okay. She ran away because well, the truth is coming out, and then she cheated Mom's because she. And now we're on our way to the next spot where we'll go check out the local streets. Let's go. All you Filipinos watching, look what's here. We just drove on the roads of Syria and we found it very similar to the Jalan Priti road we went to in our previous vlog. Colorful houses, colorful buildings, so many shops everywhere. All the buildings were just two story tall. Very colorful and pretty town. So we are now at the billionth barrel monument which means that billion barrels of oil were extracted right here by Brunei Shell uh, Corporation and this monument has been put here to commemorate that so all of these small compounds that you see everywhere those are actually all oil wells and some of them are pumping out oil even today and supplying it back to Brunei Shell Petroleum whereas many of them are inactive now like that one you see there is is closed the red one with the the yellow railings this one also i think is closed but that one actually has two nodding donkeys still working to pump out oil and the monument is right there this is the billion barrel monument this monument actually means to say that the six pillars are the six different directions in which oil is extracted and the shape is the same as how oil is extracted so it comes in a curve and then at the top you'll see the national emblem of brunei that means to show two hands the prosperity of the people of brunei which is basically a result of all the oil extraction that's happening here So all of these are the actual offshore platforms where oil is extracted. So you can stand here and watch. See, and we can see can one see. right there. So yeah. maybe that is there. Okay. So maybe that is Ampa Nine or Fairly Four. One of them. Okay. Soil is so soft. Feels like I'm slipping. See, it's actually the sand of the beach. Going 
to watch the sunset at the local beach club. Also, salpa. Our last stop for the day is the Panaga Beach Club. So, Panaga Beach Club is like a is the hot spot for most people here. A uh, lot of expats gather, a uh, lot of locals too, and there's a lot of games, sports, and activities that people can do here. And there's also the beach, which we will go to. Now we are at Panaga Beach. It's almost sunset time, and even though it's cloudy, I think some colors are still popping yeah. out of the sky. And, and it looks so beautiful, and it's so clean. I don't see even a single piece of plastic here. And all of this is like a black sand beach, which explains because this entire region is again very similar to Indonesia and Malaysia because of all the volcanic activity. So you'll find these kind of black beaches across Brunei, but because it's dark, you can't really see the color of the water. But during the day, apparently, it's a bright blue. So yeah, it would have been fun to come here. Maybe if we come again, we'll show you that. But for now, enjoy this beautiful sunset with us. This is Shishira. She's really small, and it's very difficult to fit her in the camera screen. There's Uncle and Auntie right there, waiting for us yeah. to finish vlogging. <laughs> so they're just waiting for us to finish doing this millennial thing, <laughs> and then we'll go back to exploring here. As you can see, there are a few lights far away in the sea, and those are actually the oil platforms, which are still extracting oil. And you can see a small flare of the fire, like that's fuming out of the exhaust. And uh, that that says that all of the western rigs are here, and then the eastern ones are here. So this is what Brunei is all about. It's about incredible reserves of oil, and this is the one, the human, the man-made side of things. And then eventually, over the next few days, we'll show you more of the nature as well. came to an indian restaurant to have dinner it was called bombay palace now neet ordered his favorite jaltira with boondi floating on top and we enjoyed our delicious north indian food while catching up on stories with our uncle aunt and cousin later after dinner we passed by this beautiful mosque it was so nicely lit up at night well we should visit it during day time don't you think so Now he's made one big bubble and I made three small bubbles and he left a part. 